Hello, hello, hello! Hello! Hi! Hi. Welcome to Game Development Explained with Sock Puppets! Who is, who's here a regular? We have a few. Awesome. So you already know how this works. This is Game Development Explained with Sock Puppets. So like game development, it's a little bit hacked together. Um, <laughs> there are bugs. The puppeteers have no idea what's about to befall them. Um, <laughs> they don't have fun. Yeah. Um, and also, just like any good video game, we need an audience to participate. So Anthea over here will have signs, and we're going to do a rehearsal. <laughs> That's the fast forward. So you can just do. <laughs> All of you, you have to do it. Make it, make it with your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Good. Awesome. <laughs> um, we also have a classic. Which one is that? Yeah. You get it. That's really good. I feel like we're ready to start. Are you ready to start? Okay. You. you three are ready. What about the rest of you? Are you ready to start? Are you sure? Bring it on. Okay. Previously on Game Development Explained with Suck Puppets. The team at Top Drawer Studios is hard at work on the prototype of Tales of the Dust Bunnies. An epic puzzle adventure about dust bunnies surviving the evil vacuum cleaner through the power of friendship. <laughs> is it fun? <laughs> no idea. I've got no clue. Sorry. <laughs> the code is compiling so the team can review the build. They're having a debate while they wait, and the topic is a goose if a goose and a psycho got into a fight, who goose. would win? Goose. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, yeah, good one. What do you mean, a goose? Like, um, you didn't grow up around geese, did you? <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they, they sneak up on you, and then they aim at the tender skin behind your knee, and then snap! Um, <laughs> 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 but seriously, they're like gun psychos, they're gun toting, they've got the masks. <laughs> okay, right, okay, fine. I'll take Google the good word. That obviously, I can't argue with the goose. Okay, back on track. Uh, <clears throat> Deep in the throes of code, the Davids are performing feats of engineering. This Pax Australia, we joined them to take a closer look at the role of engineer. Friends and hecklers, welcome to Game Development Explained with Sock Puppets Volume 4! <laughs> 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 Something like the arcade, 
only with no resemblance to the arcade whatsoever. <laughs> Legal reasons. Yeah. yeah. Amy, the game designer, has walked to the dark corner of the office where the engineering team sits. Her toes hit the corner of a desk. So she hops on one foot to switch the lights on. <laughs> Ooh, it's, it's so clear and, and shiny, we're in 8K. <laughs> the engineers appear, a beacon in white. <laughs> <laughs> they are one, they are legion. They are the Davids. Amy says, Hi guys, um, I'm done with my changes. Can you put the bill on a few devices for the review meeting? We can't get a real feel for the game until it's on devices. The Davids say, Yeah, no, what is mine? <laughs> I'll start a bill. M? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, can you, can you do that, uh, like, uh, speak the game dev translation thing for me? Cause, uh, you know, sure. That you what do you want to know? Well, what, okay, what's the whole build thing? Okay. So, a build is a process of turning the game from something that requires a game development tool um, in order to be able to play it into an app that anyone can play. <coughs> Depending on things like the size of the game or the efficiency of the game engine, it can take a few minutes or a few hours. Okay, got it. Cool. So, <clears throat> the David hit the build button. Um, they say... Uh, so we've got a couple of hours to kill. Fortnite or Player Unknown Battleground, which is better? Amy says... Uh, nope, no thank you. Uh, I'm getting... Um, I'm not getting into one of your debates. I'll go straighten out some documentation. Okay, cool. Let's fast forward a couple of hours. <laughs> the team pushed back the review meeting a little so that they could get a build on devices. And they're now assembled in the meeting room and they boot up the game. <laughs> Is it fun yet? Uh, we don't know. It's taking forever to load. And once it loads, it lags like crazy. And then it crashes. Um, our whole team has disappeared. Can we please have the team in the meeting? <laughs> uh, Jeff, the quality assurance person, runs a hand through his magnificent hair and says, My most concern is my inability to properly test the build. If you may forgive a moment of my bloodness, this game is currently unplayable. Uh, the uh, Sam, the producer, is also concerned. They say, uh, David, what's the best way for us to improve performance? Do we need to revisit the art style or is it just some code optimization? The David say, uh, yeah, we need to refactor everything and change the engine. <laughs> They may not look like it, but the team's expression right now is best described as abject terror. Show us abject terror. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, so, game dev, speak translation, please. Thank you. Um, the Davids want to rewrite the code and switch from building with Legos to Play-Doh. What? Uh, so, uh, okay, right, so they want to start over with different tools after all the work that we've put in. Yeah, hence the... I mean, it's not quite starting over though. The art, the game design, the learnings from building the first version of the game, these are all reusable. It still sounds like a really huge change. Hence the... I'm just going to say you are having a little too much fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> Them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Um, anyway, we should really hear what the team has to say. Sam is the first one to react. Hmm, okay. Would you mind telling us a bit more about your thinking, please? The David's answer. Uh, yeah, well, we were in a hurry to get a demo together to get funding, right? So, to save time, we built some stuff on top of what we did for Tiny Angry Flappy Bird. <laughs> 
We don't talk about that, talk about that, talk about that. It's a bit of, of trauma here. Um, the Davids continue. Oh, sorry, mate. Point is, we have to water stuff on top of hacked stuff. It's a code spaghetti. Translation, it's a mess of intertwined things. Um, that makes it very hard to debug, increase performance, or even add new features if the, if the spaghetti is <coughs> messy enough. Sam says, Okay, I understand we should refactor, but why change the engine? The David's answer. Well, you know about legendary Clash of Candy War Go, right? <laughs> <laughs> the team rolls their eyes. Come on, roll harder. Okay, good enough. Um, Amy says... Not again. See, the Davids have been obsessed with that game lately. They keep bringing it up in team discussions if it's the only one game to guide all mobile development. I mean, there's nothing wrong with drawing inspiration from something, but you should always question what to adopt, make sure it's right for your project, and keep the conversation open. Yeah, and the Davids haven't actually been doing that, though. No. They tend to monologue while gesturing wildly, like they're doing now. Yeah, the, the devs behind the game just launched their engine. Oh, the Unreality Engine, it's such a good name. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. It's going to be optimised for mobile and shorter build times. It's going to spit up, speed up our iteration. Oh, shut up and take my money, yeah. <laughs> How can you tell? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, can, I can see why they're hype. They, that sounds like it would solve a few of the studio's challenges. At face value, yes. But changing engine partway through development is a big risk. I mean, even updating the current en engine to its latest version can create a bunch of issues. Really? Any game dev in the room? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, if upgrading your engine has ever caused bugs, you may now collectively weep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you. <laughs> yep, fair enough. <laughs> I see. I, I think uh, Corrine has some concerns too. She says... Our current engine has really good tools. They help me implement and tweak the art and animation. Does the Unreality engine have that? The David Shrug. Hmm. Not exactly a detailed answer. Amy also has a question. What about a visual scripting system? I don't mind learning a new one, but I definitely need to be efficient at placing events in our levels. The David Shrug. Sam asks... <laughs> uh, any information about the pricing structure? <laughs> Surprise! The David Shrug. <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, oh, come on, guys. It's going to be the best engine on the market. Those devs know the drill. They're legendary. Ever the wise producer, Sam says, David, your enthusiasm is great. How about you take a few days to find out everything you can about the engine so we can discuss it more constructively? That actually seems pretty wise. Let's... <laughs> Fast forward a couple of days. <laughs> During their research, the Davids stumble upon groundbreaking news. They rush over to Sam's desk <gasps> and say, <laughs> Unreality are organizing a game jam so devs can get hands-on experience with the engine while their team is present. Oh, it's next week. It's free! How about us boys go sleuthing for a couple of days? Uh, sorry, hang on. Um, I'm not actually sure what a game jam is. That, that, I mean, it sounds exciting. Um, it is, but Sam also needs to think about the impact of the David's absence. Even a few days away puts some feature at risk for this month. But, I mean, if that means that the whole team will feel better about their choice of engine, that's got to be worth it, yeah? That's why Sam says... Hmm. And... You're ready to report your findings to the team in detail? The Davids say... Defo! <laughs> <laughs> and at last, Sam says... Then I support you going to the Unreality Game Jam. <laughs> Woo! Game Jam! Game Jam! Game Jam! Game Jam! Game Jam! 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> join in. It's, it's, it's all about the joining in. The end of Act One. Ooh! Yay! Yeah, 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 I like that. Smattering of polite applause. <laughs> <laughs> together or not at all, that's what I said. <laughs> so, are you all ready for Act Two? Yep. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Things are going to get hectic. They are. I, I warn you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Em, I'm sorry, I think I got, I got lost in the hype of the game jam. I got, ah. may have overcommitted. Yes, you even skipped a line. Oh! <laughs> of a fiber not together. <laughs> I thought I was over. Good title to you. <laughs> I think I got lost in that hype. I got overcommitted, sorry. Ah, uh, don't we all. Okay, so what's a game jam exactly? Um, it's an event where people develop a game in a short period of time, usually 24 to 48 hours. Are you serious? Like they do that? Yeah. 20 Really? <laughs> okay. I mean, I, look, okay, I remember the past three years of this show, uh, which is, funnily enough, all available online at uh, the, uh, <laughs> the URL you can explained with sockpuppets.com. Yes. Um, so, uh, like, for the past three years, we've been talking about this. It's hard. Game development is hard. Why are we going to try and condense it into 48 hours? Um, we hate ourselves? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make more games? Yeah, so the games of a game jam are much smaller and not meant to be commercial. It's a great way to experiment with ideas and even with skills we don't use in our everyday job. Some game jams are even tailored for newcomers to the industry with mentors available to help. Okay, right, sweet. Okay, I am hyped again. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I can't wait to see what the Davids make. Before we get to that, the Unreality team has organized a networking event so the jammers can get to know each other and form their teams. The event is held at 8 Bit Schooner, which is the local gaming pub. <laughs> and it lives up to its name, like it's pulled straight out of an 80s arcade. <laughs> that, that explains it. I mean, for those of us old enough to remember. <laughs> yeah, and also those of us who've seen Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> oh man, this is, this is just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, round of applause for the sound guys. <laughs> For a moment in the glory that is a bit canteen of van. Yep. The modal yep. nodes, thank you. Uh, it's great, but I mean, the show must go on. Okay, sorry. Um, a crowd of game jammers is ordering drinks at the bar and chatting with each other. <laughs> the crowd? We're, we're missing a crowd. There's a crowd. Any crowd? A crowd incoming. Crowd! <laughs> 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 oh, man. I'd love to say I'm seeing double, but I think it's... Do I need new glasses, or is it more? Nah, nah. That's pretty standard for a game developer's event. So, that many white male socks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And, the, oh, oh, and the Davids arrive and disappear amongst their clones. <laughs> <laughs> One person stands out of the crowd. Her name is Violet. Wait, hey, sorry, hold on, hold Violet? on. Where's, where's Violet? Violet is missing. You're turning Violet. Oh, hey! Hey! <laughs> um, so, I, I, look, this has got to be a bit of hyperbole, right? Like, it's, it's, we're showing things worse than they are to make a point. Yeah? Well, uh... No. 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 Don't say it. Don't, no, no, don't say it. Okay, so the numbers I have are a couple of years old, but having one engineer, who's a woman of color out of 17 people is actually very generous. I think she's supposed to be like a fifth of a person. <laughs> well, technically, at the moment of her size, she's about... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually really depressing. So, uh, engineers who are women of color are like mystical, magical beings. Like, do they even exist? Will I ever get to meet one? Well, <laughs> here's what I invited earlier. Yeah! <laughs> Hello! 
Such an unexpected surprise. So totally unprepared am I. Please give a warm welcome to our first ever guest narrator, Narissa. Yes, the diversity statistics in the industry aren't great, but it's getting better every year. So let's see how this story turns out. The Davids lose themselves in the crowd fairly easily, striking <laughs> conversations with all their friends, and funnily enough, they feel right at home. Violet scans the crowd for someone who looks familiar, even just colorful. No luck. But she's determined to network and find herself a team for the game jam. So she approaches one of the guys. He turns to her with a smile and says, Hey. Did you find, fall we're behind missing, them? We're missing a guy. Uh, come on, guy. <laughs> I guess we should just take one of those. Hey! Ah. <laughs> 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 There's something about the droopy nose. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, did you fall behind the washing machine? Because I think you're the sock I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm here to make a game, not her. The guy continues. So, uh, you want to be a producer, huh? <laughs> Confused. <laughs> <laughs> it, it takes him a moment to recover, then he says, So, I don't mean to be sexist, right, but you don't look like an engineer. I mean, you tend to look like... Oh, oh, dead. Uh, he walks away. Well, that was extraordinarily unprofessional, and I'm sure it won't happen again. Copy <laughs> paste <laughs> thirty times. <laughs> do do you want to tell him, or should I? A lot of women have had to deal with variations of these comments over their careers. Maybe not all of them, and maybe not all within the same five minutes. Game dev is difficult enough without having to deal with gender bias and the problems that come along with it. It's really all a bunch of yeah. really annoying white noise. Uh, well, as the evening goes on, more guys come up to speak with Violet, one after the other after the other, all pretty much the same, though with slightly less droopy noses. Uh, <laughs> the, the Davids notice some of the comments made to Violet. It's helped by the fact that she's getting less patient and louder when she tells people, I love you. You get it. Yeah. The Davids walk up to her and say, Hey, uh, sorry about the sock heads. <laughs> oh God, that is a relief. I was actually really worried there for a second. I mean, I mean, it's good. It, it would have been better if they had stepped up and told the guys they were out of line, but it's good. Violet relaxes a little and says, Thanks. Are you enjoying the event so far? The six of them strike a conversation and get along well. They decide to be a team for the game jam. Woo okay, let's fast forward to the next morning. <laughs> Ignore the bar. Um, the next morning, properly rested and caffeinated, the Davids and Violet attend the opening address for the game jam. They learn that the theme of this game jam is passage. They claim a cluster of desks for their team and start brainstorming about what they could do. Ooh, computers. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Davids... <laughs> <laughs> um, the Davids say, So, passage is about moving between places, right? Or maybe 
We make a runner or something. Yeah, passing through lots of environments. Violet chimes in. Interesting starting point. I was thinking... Yeah, we could, we could have, like, blur effect to give it a sense of speed. Oh, yeah, and we could play with the passage of time, too. Oh, yeah, bullet time. <laughs> so much bullet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the Davids keep adding to each other's idea. Violet tries to contribute, but she has a hard time being heard. They don't mean to exclude her, but they're getting excited. It's always easier to communicate with people who think like you and easy to forget the quieter voices. And a game concept takes shape. I, sorry, okay, um, I'm a little confused. This sounds like what Amy does when she designs a game, right? At, at this stage it is. The team needs a design to get started, so they're figuring it out. So when does all the, the coding start? Like, uh, what, do they, when do they, what do they do actually beside our joke about pressing the build button thing? Actually, making it as easy, quick, and bug-free as possible to press that build button is my job. But the Davids are gameplay engineers. Okay, so what does that mean? You've talked about the door problem of game design before, right? Oh, okay, right. Do you all know what we were talking about when we talk about the, the door problem? Yeah. Okay, I remember that. So do you have doors in your game? Can the player open all of them? How do they tell the difference? What kind of colours the doors? Do you do all that sort of stuff? There is, there is a big long thing about the door problem. Yeah. Exactly. Once the game designer has answered the questions, engineers have a few questions of their own. How are we building the doors and putting them in the game? Do they need to open and close at the same time for all players? Do they need to be managed by a server? Etc. Okay, okay. So, and once you've found all of your answers? We use the game engine and programming languages to shape the game. Put the 3D model of the doors in and make them do what the game designer needs them to do. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. The Davids are set on their idea. They dive into how they're going to make it happen. They're going to need lots of doors. More doors than any game should have. They say, I reckon the best way to go about this is to generate the doors procedurally as the game runs. Yeah, that'll save time on the initial loading of the level. Yeah. <laughs> Procedural generation means using rules established by code to replace or accelerate things like the production of visual elements by an artist. Violet has some concerns though. She says, Isn't it going to take a long time to build a procedural system for this? There's this tool in the engine. This is going to be so cool to develop. Maybe we can use some of that on Tales of the Dust Bunnies too. Yeah, we can just keep using it and it's just amazing. The Davids quickly divvy up the work. They task Violet with player movement and controls while they get started on the procedural generation of doors. She decides to let them give it a go. Maybe they've done this before. She doesn't know. Okay, well, so let's just fast forward through to the lunchtime and see how that goes. <laughs> Violet stretches her legs. After finishing, a <laughs> good stretch. Um, after finishing a set of abilities for the game character, she finished movement and controls like an hour ago. When she turns to the Davids, she finds them smiling. They say, We've done it! How about we do a first build to test our work so far? Is all your stuff good to go? Violet says, Yes, it'll be good to see where we're at. Okay then. And then... <laughs> The Davids hit the spawn button, or the build button. <laughs> Sorry, you know what I meant. The Davids turn back around to Violet and say, So, what do you reckon? Javelin exosuit? Oh, the build is done. What? Wow. I mean, seriously? Yeah. That is so much faster than Tales of the Dust Bunny's build. I thought, I think the Unreality Engine just won the battle of the engines. Mm. I wouldn't be so fast to judge. This game is a lot smaller. There are so many more elements to consider. Okay, good point. The Davids grab a controller Somehow. and <laughs> and crowd around their computer with Violet. They say, "You'll see, the doors are amazing." <laughs> they move the character through the first room and get to the first door frame. There's no door. <laughs> the Davids try to cross the threshold, but an invisible barrier blocks the character. Uh, oops. Oh. Violet says, The character movement seems fine. 
but the door doesn't appear. And it doesn't open either. Maybe... Oh! I know! The shape generation isn't doing what it should. This shouldn't take too long to fix. I'll just keep doing things. This time, Violet tries harder to, conv to convince them. Guys, we're wasting time. I've worked with Unreal. Yeah, maybe the visual generates fine, but somewhere else in the level, only the collision is at the right place. And, you know, it could be... The Davids sit back at their computer and get to work. A couple of hours get fast forwarded. This time, the doors appear, but then they get bent out of shape when they open. And the da Davids actually insist that it's an improvement. More time passes. This time, the doors appear in the middle of the rooms and kill the player when they get near. <laughs> Feature, not a bug. <laughs> the Davids are convinced they're close to fixing everything. It's 10 p.m. though. The game has music and sound effects and some basic menu pages thanks to Violet. Overall, the team is not nearly where they want to be. Violet says, Guys, it's getting late, and I think we'll see things clearer once we rest. I'm heading off. How about... Oh, we can knock down those doors. Yeah, we, we're sure we can. Oh, it's going to be easy. We just... Tired, Violet decides not to insist and heads home. The Davids work away for most of the night. Let's jump to the morning. <laughs> Okay, it's 8am on the second and last day of the game jam. Violet is the first one in. <laughs> <laughs> she is, like, fully rested, obviously. <laughs> and so she... <laughs> I think I've never been more terrorist high. <laughs> I'll get on with it. <laughs> She is fully rested and clearly dangerous. Um, <laughs> she boots up the game to uh, a see what the, the state the game is in. Um, the doors are snowflakes, yeah. <laughs> but at least they don't kill the player anymore. Yeah. Violet shakes her head. There's only so much anyone can produce after a long day of work. When you're tired, you just make more mistakes. Seriously, crunch does not pay off. On the flip side, the Davids aren't here, and so Violet rolls up her sleeves and gets to work unhindered. A couple of hours pass. Violet finishes up a line of code and hits the bell button. <laughs> A few seconds later, she plays the newest version of the game at her desk. It's 10 a.m., and the Davids drag their feet into the room. There are bags under their eye, and it takes them a moment to huddle around Violet's desk and realize what's happened. There are working doors in the game. <laughs> And it makes a world of difference. The Davids say, You fixed the bug, wicked! Violet shakes her head and says, No, I tried to tell you before. I've worked with Unreality. There's a tool that allows you to create door templates that code can spawn as needed. It's much quicker for us to develop, and the number of door copies have almost no impact on loading. So I read it all your work. The Davids look down at their feet, uncomfortable with their mistake. They say, Violet, we're sorry. Uh, we should have made room for you to speak. Uh, what do you think we should be doing today? <laughs> the Davids have grown as humans. <laughs> <laughs> they can now fully see how magical Violet is. <laughs> oh, she was a unicorn all along. Yeah, it's great that the Davids see it now. She shouldn't have had to work this hard to prove herself for them to listen, though. If the Davids had listened earlier, 
they wouldn't have fallen behind on development. And now, they have a boring game. And only a few hours to fix it. <laughs> that is, end of act two. their game just in time. It's not quite what they wanted it to be, but it's a lot better than it was where than where it was. By drawing from the whole team's experience, they turned their very literal interpretations of passage into something more inspired. More of a rite of passage, a process of growth. It's called um, I think he forgot to replace this highlighted question mark. Oh, uh, shoot. It's called, it's called... Untitled Sock Game! <laughs> no! <laughs> no. <laughs> Great! Um, great! Great! Untitled Sock Game, Sock Game it is! Untitled Sock Game, good. It's, it's now a two-player cooperative game. <coughs> How did that happen in a day? Unicorn magic. <laughs> Also, the unreality asset store. <laughs> <laughs> Player one can open doors, but can't see them. Player two can see doors, but not open them. As they work together, the game world gains more color and details. By the game's end, both players can see doors and open them. Nothing can stop them anymore. <laughs> For the closing ceremony of the game jam, Lip button, everyone is back at 8 bit schooner. The crowd is impatiently awaiting the verdict from the judges about who made the best game. <laughs> they look so, so, so pensive. <laughs> <laughs> the Davids arrive with Violet, and something is a little bit different about them. Actually, they're currently exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> Is this? But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it appears there is something different about them in about 30 seconds. Or so. <laughs> Why you have so many bonds? Yes, there is. <laughs> We're keeping bonds in money at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some oh, music? Okay, so, sorry, they're all from Canberra. Kmart Alpha Male Brand. Aha! There we go. Yay! There's something different about them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> there is something definitely different about them. <laughs> One of them has grown an extraordinary long time. <laughs> <laughs> there is a spring in their step, a zhuzh in their style. Um, I mean, I guess you can spot the difference. <laughs> At last, a guy from the Unreality team takes the stage, and he says, uh, Welcome, everybody. Thank you for participating in our Unreality Game Jam. Yeah. 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 The guy continues, uh, after much deliberation, the committee has chosen the winners of six free unreality licenses. The game that stood out with its creative take on the theme and powerful message. Please join me in congratulate, congratulating the makers of Untitled Sock Game! Yeah. Yeah. The Davids and Violet get on stage to shake hands with the guy and take a quick picture. 
The guy says... I just want to watch him try and shake hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Guy says, now, mingle, relax, celebrate. The Davids and Violet make their way to the bar to grab a beer, and one of the guys approaches them. They turn to Violet and say, So, uh, which one of these is your boyfriend, eh? <laughs> Violet, <laughs> Violet sighs, but then the Davids say, My... That's not okay. She is an awesome div. <laughs> the Davids have grown as humans. <laughs> and stretched further as socks. <laughs> <laughs> the guy spins on his heel, insulted, and walks away. He's quickly replaced by another guy who, t who speaks to the Davids. Y'all did a great job on this game. The Davids say. Aw, oh, thanks, bye. The guy asks them a few questions about how they came up with the concept, but they only speak to the Davids, not even looking at Violet. They say. Uh, I think your use of the template tool is a really great idea to get all those doors in the game without sacrificing performance. <sighs> David sees the opportunity to point to Violet and say, Yeah, well, actually, we made the huge mistake of not using that at first. Violet is the superstar who brought this home. <laughs> the Davids have grown as humans. <laughs> and stretched as socks. <laughs> and leveled up as allies. Yay. Yay. I didn't know such little things could make a difference. They really do. Time for some customary sock puppet life lesson. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're here for, isn't it? <laughs> the Davids were never jerks, but because they were moving through life without seeing the doors, they didn't open them for others. Like Player One in Untitled Sock Game. Luckily, they didn't take it personally when Violet showed them the doors. They took it as an opportunity to collaborate with player two. And the world is better for it. Magical. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> At 8-bit schooner, the party is in full swing. <laughs> <laughs> dressed as sexy video game characters dance on the table. I just I just need you to know that we did not see that. <laughs> Sorry. Is it meant to be Mario? <laughs> to make a sexy sock puppet will haunt me forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering, is she going to do a, 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 a version of Jolene at some point? <laughs> God, okay. <clears throat> to be clear, the problem is not the people who work these gigs. They're strong, beautiful, and deserve to be safe and respected just like everyone else. The problem is event organizers not thinking through how some of their choices can make underrepresented people feel uncomfortable. They don't see the door. I can tell that uh, Violet feels pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she says, I don't feel welcome here. I'm gonna go. And the Davids say, Yeah, that's not okay. Wanna grab dinner somewhere else instead? So the Davids and Violet have a nice, relaxing dinner and exchange contact details so they can stay in touch. 
The Davids think that if Top Joy Studio switches over to Unreality, Violet's help would make a big difference. So let's fast forward to the next day! <laughs> We are back. <laughs> <laughs> we are back at Top Drawer Studio. The Davids. Haha, <laughs> 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 yes. We are back. Definitely Yay. back now. Yes. Um, and the Davids have spent the morning writing up their report and collating their thoughts about the Unreality Engine. And around noon, the team get together in the meeting room to discuss whether or not they should switch engines. Sam quickly notices the change in the Davids. They say... That hair, that looks great on you. And the tie, even though it's in your mouth. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the sunnies on the back of your head. <laughs> you look happier, refreshed. The Davids say... Thank you. I learned a lot about uh, a lot during the game jam, and worked with an awesome engineer. And I'd love to work with her again if we expand the studio. Amy says she sounds cool. I'd love to meet her someday. And then Sam says we should invite her to visit at least. So, what have you learned about the Unreality Engine? The David's answer. Oh. It has some great tools for rapid development and shorter build times, and it'll speed up our iteration. Kareem says, What about the art tools? The Davids turn to her and say, Great question. They're not quite as good as our current engine, but we wouldn't need much work to bring them up to par. Amy says, And the visual scripting tools? Again, the Davids take the time to turn to her before saying, yeah, glad you asked. They have a great one, fully integrated. It's uh, very similar to the one from our current engine, so you wouldn't have to completely relearn it. Amy is ecstatic, and she's not the only one. The whole team is feeling the hype now. Only Sam has a burning question. So, what about the cost? The Davids <laughs> smile their widest grin. That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty wide, actually. <laughs> yep, we want enough licenses to cover the engineering team, and the total cost for four more licenses is half of what we pay now. Okay, I am calling it now. Unreality wins the war of the engines. Yay! <laughs> The team starts discussing the repercussions of making the switch, how long it would take to refactor the code, how much it would improve the game and speed up further development. And then throughout the meeting, the Davids make sure they don't cut people off or dismiss anyone's ideas. And the next day, when they get an email from the Unreality team to ask for feedback on the game jam, they write back to say, in no uncertain terms, that the final party could have been more inclusive and that they probably should have well have a well-enforced code of conduct that helps everyone feel welcome. The end. guest puppeteer, Nicole Lindrews of Green Ronan Publishing, gave life to Amy, Jeff and Violet. <laughs> Master of Props, Backgrounds and Additional Puppeteering, John Kane. Our awesome 
theme song, which I do love, and the live sound effects are by the amazing Jared Hall. Our new lighting rig and live light show by Julie Watsko. Our gaffer, our cameraman, and just all round helper, Yosha, and help me with your last name. Nushiwan. Thank you. And that cry was genuine. Like that engine switch was the worst. <laughs> the theater architect, puppet creator, prop smith, and audience engagement specialist, Anthea Freshwater. <laughs> international guest narrator, Narissa Walter! Returning narrator and always awesome, David Quinn. <laughs> and last but by no means in any way least, written and narrated and basically the person who just makes all this amazing stuff happen, Emily Poissonnet! <laughs> Thank you.